Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Precious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you give to come to your presence and worship you. May the time that we spent together be a blessing to all of us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Shall we now have our opening hymn? Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. There is only one God, there is only one King. There is only one body, that is why we sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Made for the glory of God, purchased by His precious Son. Born with the right to be clean, oh Jesus the victory has won. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. You are the family of God, you are the promise divine. You are God's chosen desire, you are the glorious new one. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. The scripture lesson for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 7 to 15. Today's lesson is Paul's second letter to the Corinthians chapter 4 verses from 7 to 15. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you in his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Here ends the lesson. Praise be to you, O God. Amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Precious Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. 
even as we meditate, may your spirit guide us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Friends, the second Sunday of November is celebrated normally as Unity Sunday. And even as we celebrate Unity Sunday yet again, we do that in a context of extreme disunity. Disunity within our families. Expressions of disunity much more than before in many of our local congregations. Disunity among local churches. This disunity being permeated across global churches. Divisions based on caste, gender, class, sexual orientation, gender. All this forms the background of the continued call to unity. The church has always strived to greater unity and closer fellowship. Writing to Corinthians, in this second letter, chapter 4, verses 7 to 15, Paul writes about the treasures in clay jars and offers us few insights that should form the basis of a unity. The first insight is divine power, affirming that we are all treasures in clay jars. Paul affirms that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. All that we are, all that we have achieved, all that we seem to be, all that is because of God. When this primary understanding comes to us, we are redeemed of the sin of ego. We are redeemed from a bloated self-consciousness. We understand that we are just the clay jars that hold the immense treasure that God gives us. This extraordinary understanding of divine power humbles us and that humbling is essential for unity. When every person humbles, when every person is able to say, you are better than me, there lies the secret of unity. The second experience that Paul talks about is the commonality in the lived out cross expressions. Discipleship was not easy and going through the gruesomeness of discipleship experience, Paul writes, we are afflicted, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, not forsaken. Struck down, not destroyed. Carrying the death of Jesus in life so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in us. The experiences of discipleship, the cost of discipleship humbles us. There are several people whom we see around us who has gone through the gruesomeness of discipleship, paid the price for the faith that they held dear. And despite the marks of pain in their body, we see their humility reflected. Father Michael Lapsley is one typical example. Fighting against apartheid, working for 
healing of memories, he lost both his hands in a bomb blast. Forgiving those people who planted the bomb, he continued his experience of healing of memories, totally believing that painful experiences are part of discipleship. The reason why we should be striving for unity is this. Experience of discipleship is always a humbling experience and that never strives for disunity but always for unity, willing the pay the price for unity. The third reason why Paul affirms unity is important is that we have the same spirit, the same spirit of faith in accordance with the scriptures. It is not one spirit in one person and another spirit in another person and yet another spirit in another person. It is the same spirit that binds us together. It is the same Jesus that we worship. It is the same God, the triune one that we adore. If it is the same God, same Jesus, same spirit, same triune one, why worship divided? And therefore Paul underlines his statement that we worship the same spirit. The next reasoning for him is that it is the same hope that which all of us are striving for. If it is the same hope, which is our goal, which is our direction, why do it in disunity? And what is that hope? One who raised Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will one day bring us with him into his presence. A future. A future that we are looking for is coming soon and if all of us are on the route to the same future, if all of us are in the same route with the same hope, why fight on the way? Why disunited on the way? Why don't we enjoy that journey in togetherness, journey in hope? journey into the same destination. And finally, Paul says, it is the same grace that gives us the strength to realize that we are all treasures but in clay pots. Grace, as it extends, increases. It increases thanksgiving. Extended grace. Grace that increases thanksgiving within us is the reason why we can be together, we should be together. Grace unites us. Grace keeps us together. Grace humbles us. And Paul says, this humbling is important in unity. Friends, yes, when families are divided, churches are divided, Unity Sunday calls us, remembering and reminding that this extraordinary power that makes us who we are is not ours, but God's. The discipleship experiences should be humbling experiences, drawing us to unity. The same spirit that binds us should bind us to unity. The same hope that leads us should lead us to unity. The same grace that holds us should hold us into unity. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for once again reminding us disunity is sin. We pray, Lord, that we would repent, recompense, change course and come your way, contributing our might towards unity. Even if we do not contribute anything to unity, keep us away from anything that contributes to disunity. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
We will now have our closing hymn. Guide me, Lord, the great Redeemer, pilgrim to this barren land. I am weak, but you are mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and evermore. Open now the crystal fountain where the healing waters flow. Let the fire and cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, ever be my strength and shield. Ever be my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, Bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's distraction land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever sing to you. I will ever sing to you. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.